This is a watercolour tutorial showing how I painted a purple petunia using classic watercolours. And the first thing that I do is I draw it out on nice thick 300 gsm watercolour paper with just a 2B pencil and some quite faint lines. I decided to do the background leaves first so I thought I'd use a combination of a yellow and a blue, cadmium yellow pale and Windsor blue green shade to make my green colours. So what I've done is I've included a, a shot of the palette so you can see how I'm mixing those colours together on the little sort of palette bit in the middle with water and then applying them onto the paper. And I'm not being too fussy, I don't want the background to be too crisp and too sharp edged so I'm allowing a lot of the watery colour to kind of flood and bleed into the colour next to it. Normally I wouldn't do that because it's the background, I want it to be a little bit fuzzy and a little bit uh, indistinct so I'm allowing those colours to do that. But I do want to create a feeling of depth and, and recession, you know, some leaves closer to you, some further away, which is why I'm doing some of the, the sort of gaps in between the leaves a lot darker to give that feeling that, you know, some of these leaves are on top of or overlapping other leaves in the picture. And here I've just gone in a little bit closer because I couldn't paint on the right hand side with the palette in the way, so I had to move it out of the way just in order to paint this bit. But it's exactly the same kind of idea, putting wet paints onto the paper with a bit of water and flooding them and blending them on the paper. So for the flower petals themselves, I was going to use some yellow ochre for some pale bits and then I wanted to do the really, really strong purple using a mixture of permanent rose and also Windsor blue green shade again. So using a similar blue to what I'd used in the background. So I start with some pale yellow ochre on the edge of the petal and then drop in a little bit of permanent rose while it's still wet so it can flood a little bit outwards and into the yellow ochre. Then I decide that I'm going to do the purple bit and I got this lovely rich purple by using a combination of permanent rose and the Windsor blue green shade together. And it got a really, really strong purple and I drop in a little bit of water down the center of that purple bit in order to try and get a lighter area, like a bit where the light's going to catch. So hopefully it's a little bit clearer on this one, especially as it dries. So I do all of this, do the color, drop in some uh, clean water at this stage and then as you can see that it dries, that clean water sort of pushes outwards, blooms outwards and gives me a paler area on that petal. Notice how when I move on to do the next petal, it's not one that was adjacent to the first one that I did because that one is still wet, it's still damp and if I paint the petal next to that one, they're going to flood together and I don't want that to happen. Even though I'm relying on some kind of bleeding and some kind of flooding of the colours within each petal, I want the edges of each petal to be crisply defined. So I've gotten a style, I've got an approach now that I think is working. So what I do is I just move around the flower now, tackling each petal in exactly the same way. And in hindsight, that probably was a bit of my downfall, a bit of my undoing, because I kind of got into a bit of a comfort zone. I was doing the same process on each petal, exactly the same. All right, got a bit more confident to drop a little bit more clean water in on each petal, so that I got you know a bigger, lighter area. But it was just the same kind of approach, and it be got, began to feel a bit mechanical. Um, and it was at this point where I started to feel that perhaps the, the flower was you know, it wasn't enough of a challenge. It, you know, there wasn't enough difference in the petals, the petal shapes and the curving and the colors. But I wanted to persevere with it and finish it and get it done. So I continued and here you can see me going in and just doing some of the little details and stuff. I'm using a size three round brush uh, to do a lot of these details. And I'm just doing the little polleny stamony bits in the middle, but I'm also trying to deepen the shadows down the center of each petal. Um, so there's a, there's a sort of a curve and an edge to each one. So what you can see me doing is going in and adding a bit of green and sometimes a little bit of purple just down the very center edge in the pale area in the bit that I did yellow ochre um, just to give the idea of a crease. And here you can see me doing some very, very fine little vein work within the um, yellow ochre. And I probably should have been a bit braver here, a bit bolder, and done it a little bit darker. Because as you put it on with watercolour, it looks a little dark. But then as it dries, it gets faded and paler. So I should have done it a bit stronger. So there you go. It's pretty much finished. And here's the comparison photo reference right next to the painting. And I'm sort of mixed feelings about this one. Things that I liked, I like the kind of expressive way I let the colors flood and, and sort of like bleed around a lot more than usual. But I think it was too simple a flower. I don't think it challenged me, it didn't give me enough to really get my teeth into. And also I think I focused too much on the purple and not enough on the reds. But let me know what you think below. And uh, if you missed my previous video, 
uh, how I painted a pink peony with classic watercolors, then if you look below, you can find the links to that and also all the other uh, videos that I've done recently. Thanks for watching.